Governor Whitmer made her first stop after her State of the State speech in Grand Rapids this morning. At the United Methodist Community House, she met with a number of area seniors to talk about some of the highlights of her Wednesday night address to a joint session of the legislature, in particular, the repeal of the pension tax. Political reporter Rick Albin was at the event, and you got a chance to talk to the governor afterwards, what you have to say. Well, you know, she had a lot to reinforce about what she said last night. The governor's speech covered a lot of ground, but a lot of that ground is already part of the conversation in Lansing and has been for a while. The earned income tax credit, the governor has renamed the Working Families Tax Credit, has already passed the Senate. The pension tax repeal is in the works. Universal pre-K gun law, uh, gun laws for storage, background check, and red flags are yet to be introduced. The governor talked last night about working together, presumably with Democrats and Republicans. But with GOP members largely unresponsive to some of the governor's plans, it left me to wonder if she is really going to need Republican votes on some of her bigger agenda wishes. I know it's politic to say that you want Republicans to join with the majority Democrats to get your legislative agenda passed. But as a practical matter of the things you laid out last night, where do you need Republicans? Where don't you have 56 and 20? Well, listen, you know, the Democrats have a two-seat majority in the House and the Senate. And that's why I've reinforced with everyone. What we did in this last election was historic, but I don't want to hear anyone saying the word mandate. This is an affirmation we're focused on the right things. And so long as we stay focused on the right things, I think we'll earn bipartisan support. I'm not going to discount anyone. I would like the vast majority of things that I signed to have over 90 votes. So she didn't say exactly where, if anywhere, she'll need the Republicans, but she did acknowledge that slim majority and may have silently acknowledged it last night by omitting a repeal of right to work in her speech. That would have immediately set up a partisan battle and could really derail the legislative session. So that was last night, but that issue still isn't dead. So we'll see what happens as this session goes along. Okay, well, speaking of that slim margin, things really got off to a dramatic start when you had the father of a newborn rushing back to put that vote in. Is that how it's going to go? Man, I hope not. Yeah. Because here's the problem with that. If you're, if you're only getting Democratic votes on this issue, and the same would be true for Republicans, it means that there isn't that cooperation that I think many people would like to see in government. It's all right if you've got a two-party system, you're going to have some differences, but it can't be on everything. And there ought to be a lot of things, and I don't know how much in the state of the state, I don't want to speak for either party, but the majority of bills that pass in Lansing, and it's the same every year, they are bipartisan. Mm -hmm. It's just the ones that political reporters talk mm -hmm. about a lot that aren't bipartisan, and those are the ones that will get the attention. Yeah, so the pension yeah. tax and the working families tax credit, what else is up next? Well, here's one that could be contentious. Uh, it's not in the state of the state, but it was introduced today. It's the proposal to move Michigan's primary to February 27th. Now, that could become contentious because Republican National Committee rules don't allow other states to move up before March 1st. That includes Michigan. The DNC does. So if it's moved, Republicans could stand to lose a significant percentage of their delegation to the convention in 2024. They don't want to do that. Mm -hmm. Remember, if we go all the way back to when Hillary Clinton was running and Democrats moved theirs ahead, they lost a bunch of delegates. They got them replaced after the thing was pretty much settled. So that's going to be an argument over there. And that really, that could have a sig significant impact on the Republican primary in 2024. All right. Going to be interesting. But yeah, it won't be dull. Yeah. Never is. Thank you, Rick.